Hello and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com under the topic of waves and sound. The title is Waves Case Studies. So first we need to review some of the definitions we've had. I'm going to go through them fairly quickly because if you've been moving through this with me, you've done these several times. Wavelength is the distance between a point on a wave and the same point on the next wave, such as from crest to crest. Amplitude is a measurement of the greatest displacement from equilibrium. Okay, so in other words, it's half the distance from the crest to the trough, which is the wave height. So equilibrium to greatest displacement. Uh, speed is the rate at which the uh, at which distance is traveled. In this case, we're talking about by the energy in the wave is the thing moving. Uh, frequency is the number of cycles of a wave that occur each second. This is the inverse of the period, although that's not going to be pertinent in this particular uh, concept builder. Uh, medium is the material the wave is traveling through. So if this is a sound wave traveling through the air, the medium is the air. For these problems, it's going to be the waves are going to be traveling through a rope. So the medium will be the rope. Tension is the tightness of that rope how tight it is, the tighter you make it, that's going to more uh, make it so it increases how quickly one molecule in the rope reacts to, reacts to changes in the one next to it. In other words, it's going to end up going faster through it. We'll get to that more in more detail a little bit later. Uh, density, uh, in this case, we're talking about linear density of the rope describes how much mass there is in each centimeter of the rope or how much mass in each inch or mass in each meter, however you want to look at that. So the apprentice level here is the first level. It just has you deal with wavelength and amplitude. It gives you a question like this and a picture. The diagram below is a snapshot in time of a wave moving along a rope. Which diagram below represents a wave moving through the same rope but having twice the wavelength and one half the amplitude? So in other words, we're just testing, do you know what wavelength and amplitude are? Can you double one and half the other? Well, wavelength is how far it is from one point on a wave to when that point repeats itself. So here we have equilibrium moving up. Next time we hit equilibrium moving up is right here. So we need to double the length of that. Okay, so if we're going to double the length of that, it's going to end up uh, going up here. It'll come down here and it'll go back up here. Okay, we'll hit uh, well, we'll get the crest and the trough in a moment after we talk about the amplitude. Okay, so next we see that the amplitude is half the size. Amplitude is from equilibrium to crest or equilibrium to trough. And we have to cut that in half. Right now it's one, two. And so we're going to need to make it one. Okay, so to do both of those things, we're going to make the crest, instead of the crest being two squares later, the crest will be four squares later. That's going to make the wavelength longer. And the amplitude is only one. So we'll hit the crest right there and we'll hit the trough. Whoops, that's two. We'll hit the trough right there. So let's go ahead and make our little wave here up, down, and back up. Okay, so that will be our new wave that has twice the wavelength because its wavelength is now the full length of this which is, I think, 16 squares, and it used to be 8, so we've doubled the wavelength, and the amplitude used to be 2, and now it's 1. Used to be 2, used to be two and now it's 1. All right? All right, and that's the apprentice level. For the next level, we're going to need to um, take a look at the wave speed equation, which is that the velocity of a wave is equal to the wavelength of that wave times its frequency. Now this leads to three different relationships that we're going to see. First, we can look at what happens if frequency is constant. You'll have problems where the frequency is constant. You can see the, the speed equals the wavelength if the frequency is constant times a constant frequency. So what we say is we say the speed is directly proportional to the wavelength. So if you see a problem where the frequency is not changing, then if the speed doubles, the wavelength doubles. If the wavelength doubles, the speed doubles, etc. Next, if the wavelength is constant, so if this is constant, then these are both in the numerator on opposite sides. We've got a directly proportional relationship. If the frequency doubles, the speed doubles. 
if the speed doubles, the frequency doubles, if the wavelength is held constant, and finally, if the if the speed is held constant, we'd have to move one of these in the denominator, and we see that the frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength. So if you see a problem where the speed is constant and the frequency doubles, then this will get cut in half. If this gets cut in half, this will double. They go in the opposite directions by the same factor. Let's put that into practice here. Um, the diagram below is a snapshot in time of a wave moving along a rope. Which diagram below represents a wave vibrating with two times the frequency and moving through the same rope, thus having the same speed. Okay, so we can see that our speed is constant. And since our speed is constant, that means, let's go back to our diagram here, if speed is constant, then we see an inverse relationship between frequency and wavelength. Okay, so if we have an inverse relationship, that means if the frequency is two times bigger, the wavelength must be one half the size. So to make the wavelength one half the size, we want to get to the crest in half the time. And so we will have something like this. I'm going to let you continue it the rest of the way, but you can see that uh, the full wave is only four, whereas it used to be eight. Okay. So once again, because it was two times and it was inverse, the frequency was two times and it was inverse. That means the wavelength will be one half the size. All right. On to the wizard level. So for the wizard level, we have two things going on. We have differences in density and differences in tension. Um, the, the speed of a wave, if we change the density, the speed of the wave is inversely quadratically proportional to that. In other words, if the density gets four times bigger, we square root that, the velocity will be half the, half the speed. Okay. If the density gets nine times bigger, then this will be uh, three times and in the opposite direction. So if this is nine times bigger, this is three times smaller. If this is nine times smaller, this is three times bigger. Okay, that's the inverse quadratic there. And then what does that, how do we draw that? Well, wavelength is the key to drawing. And we know that the speed is directly proportional to the wavelength. So if this is nine times smaller, this is three times bigger, which means this is three times bigger. Okay, inverse quadratic and direct. And then if we have tension changing, oh, really quick, why is that? If the density is getting bigger, that means it's heavier. Things with more mass uh, accelerate slower, which means the energy will carry down the wave slower. Okay, that's the basic idea. Okay, so once again, the density changes. This changes by the square root of it in the opposite direction. Tension, on the other hand, is directly proportional, but with the quadratic, so quadratically proportional. So if the tension gets nine times bigger, the velocity is three times bigger, the square root. If the tension is four times smaller, then the velocity is two times bigger. And once again, the velocity is directly proportional to the wavelength. So if the tension is four times smaller, two times smaller, two times smaller. Let's put that into practice. The diagram at the right is a snapshot in time of a wave moving along a rope. Which diagram below represents the, a wave with the same frequency, but moving at a different, through a different rope, having nine times the linear density and being pulled to the same tension? Okay, so our linear density is the inverse quadratic. So if this is nine times bigger, okay, nine times the linear density. So this is times nine. Well, we have to square root that, and then we have to go, go the opposite direction. Okay, so square root of nine is three. The opposite direction is dividing. So our velocity will get three times smaller or divided by three. And that means the wavelength is three times smaller. Well, that's a little hard to draw on here. This wasn't designed to do that. So this is two squares. So we're going to be at two thirds of a square. So two thirds of a square, two thirds of a square back to here, 
two thirds of a square down to here. Okay, and you get the idea back up two thirds of a square. So that's easy. The ones you get will not have thirds of a square. They'll be whole squares or four squares or six squares or eight squares or something like that. Okay, um, so it'll be a little bit easier, but that's the idea. And the biggest key is if you see that it got smaller, pick something with a smaller wavelength. The other options will tend to have bigger wavelengths. All right, I uh, feel free to uh, go back to uh, these types of slides that have um, that have the the keys on them, like these, as you're doing the work, and that will help you as you're trying to puzzle through it. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you have, uh, please hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time on the scientific adventures of Beard.